the final footprints of a four-year-old girl that drowned in the lake pictured here. San Francisco Cliff House before it was burned to the ground in 1900. Ham, the chimpanzee, preparing for his Mercury Redstone test flight, conducted in 1961. When the train that ran between Paris and Granville arrived at Montparnasse Station on October 22nd, 1895, its speed was somewhere between 25 and 37 miles per hour. The high rate of speed, a choice by the conductor in the hopes of making up time, an insufficient break sent the locomotive through buffers on the track and ultimately the station itself. Of the 131 passengers aboard the train, only four or five were injured. One person, however, on the street was killed. Credited as a pioneer of modern neurology, Dr. Jude Chain sought out patients with neurological disorders using electricity in their diagnosis and treatment. He developed a machine to administer local neurological and electrical stimuli in order to understand the relationship between muscular movements and neurological pathways. This young girl here was pictured dying. Over the course of three days, she was trapped. How was it possible that no one could save this little girl? Why were people taking pictures instead of getting her out of the brutally cold waters and remnants of the volcanic eruption? Though she was mobile from the waist up, Sanchez's legs were pinned beneath a door made of bricks, which along with the location made it impossible to rescue the girl. This picture was taken by the crew of a ship who saw a girl 11 years old floating on a disintegrating float. Her whole family was murdered on a sailboat by their hide captain who left her to drown with the sinking boat. She miraculously made it to the lifeboat. She drifted for four days with no water, no food, also being burned by the sun. Upon hearing that she had survived and the captain killed himself. Often associated with the French Revolution, the guillotine has origins in the Middle Ages. It was a method of execution that was purported to be more humane than other techniques and found use well into the 20th century. The last time the blade of a guillotine came down on a convicted criminal's neck, it was that of a Tunisian immigrant who lived in Marseille and was sentenced to execution after having slain his girlfriend. He was executed in September 1977. With a history that traces to the 11th century, the Tower of London wasn't initially intended to be a prison, but it became one of the most famous places used for punitive confinement to the world. Prisoners held at the Tower of London include then Princess Elizabeth Tudor in 1554, two of Henry VIII's wives, Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, and Guy Fawkes after the gunplower fought of 1605. The tower continued to be used as a prison on and off through history, with a pair of brothers serving as its last prisoners. The Cray twins, Ronnie and Reggie, were members of an organised crime outfit in London's East End, but it was failing to report for military duty that landed them in the towers in 1952. Twin siblings Carl and Victoria are reportedly two of the world's youngest billionaires, but perhaps more notable than their wealth is how they got it. Their fortunes, approximately 1.8 billion each, came from the Third Reich fortune of their late grandfather. Named Friedrich, who was reportedly World War II era's German's richest man and gained his wealth by building a weapons empire on the back of slave labour. He is believed to have seized Jewish-owned companies whilst the Third Reich controlled Europe, according to a 2008 study. Albert Speer defied orders from Adolf Hitler to destroy German civilian infrastructure. In March 1945, the Allies captured the final bridge of the Rhine River that allowed access into Germany. At this point, Hitler issued a command even more extreme than his 1944 order to destroy Paris, the Demolition of Reich Territory order, which is popularly known as Nero Decree. This would have wiped out all of Germany's industry and infrastructure to keep it from falling under Allied control. This would have wiped out all of Germany's industry and infrastructure to keep it from falling under Allied control. The German leader was apparently unconcerned about any impact such an order would have on his country's vulnerable civilian population.